Hi, my name is Steve James, and welcome back to this audio class on how to read the Bible for understanding and power. This is the More Abundant Life Podcast, episode number 349, Believing the Greatest Law, part one. In this session, we will learn the importance of believing when it comes to receiving the promises of God. God's Word teaches us that as we believe, we will receive. Alrighty, believe in the greatest law. To know what is available from God, you have to know what God's Word says. I believe that the Word of God is the will of God, that if we're going to know the will of God, we must go back and read the Word of God, the Bible. One cannot listen to the man on the TV or in the movies or the guy on the street corner or in some meeting place. He may be right, he may be wrong. The only way to know for sure is if we go to God's Word and read it for ourselves or if someone reads it to us. No one can know the will of God without knowing the Word of God. The Bible is the revealed will and Word of God. God's Word means what it says and says what it means. God has a purpose for everything He says. Where He says it, why He says it, how He says it, when He says it, and to whom He says it. Once we know what God's Word says, we can start to believe it and start to tap the resources for the more than abundant life. Pretty cool. We will start to get results to our prayers and see God working in our lives. Look at this wonderful truth as we go to 1st John near the back. Remember that? 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. 1st John chapter 5 and in verse 14. This is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And we know that He hears us, and whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petition that we desire of Him. Pretty simple, huh? We find the promise of God's Word, we ask for that, we know God hears it, and then we also know that we're going to get it. Pretty cool, huh? I like that. Another great truth in God's Word is that God's ability always equals His willingness. In other words, if God says, I will do something, then He'll do it. He doesn't say it if He's not going to do it. It's not like me. Now, you might ask me, hey, Steve, could I borrow your car? And I have a car out there, and I could let you borrow it, right? But I could say, I'm sorry, you can't borrow my car, right? Right? So I would, I would have the ability, because I own a car. I'm just not willing to let you use my car. See, God's not like that. God, if God says it, God will do it. God says, healing's available, then healing's available. It's a, God's willingness always equals his ability. His ability always equals his willingness. Look at the Romans. We'll see this truth here. Romans chapter 4 goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. Romans chapter 4 and in verse 20. He's talking about Abram. And Abram, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith or believing. That word faith can be either is the Greek word pista. So in, in, in the King James, the Bible I'm using, it's usually translated either faith or believing. It's easier to think, in my way of looking at it, as believing. So he was what? He was strong in believing, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he, God, had promised, he was able also to perform. If God says it, that settles it. There you, and that's it. There's a there's a little bumper sticker or a little thing you can put on your refrigerator that says God says it, I believe it, that settles it. Pretty nice. 
But I think it really would be better if it was written, God said it, that settles it. Or, thank God I believe it, is a better way. Thank God I believe it. God says it, that settles it, I believe it. We'll say it that way. I believe what God says. Because God always does what he says he can do. Now, you could come up to me and say, Steve, could I use your motorcycle? I'll use that one. And I'd say, sure, go right ahead. There's only one problem. I don't own a motorcycle. <laughs> I'm willing, right? Yeah. I'm willing. Yeah, use the, go ahead, use the motorcycle. There's only one problem. I don't have the ability. I don't have the motorcycle. See, that's not the way it is with God. God is always willing and able to do what he says he can do. If God says he can do it, then he's got the ability. Pretty neat. Look at, while we're in Romans, go to verse 11, I mean chapter 11, and we'll look at verse 29. The same idea, it says, For the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. In other words, if God makes something available, his gifts and his callings, without repentance, means God doesn't give it to you, then take it back. If God gives it to you, it's yours. He doesn't take it back. All right, let's go to the, in the, the first few books of the Bible. It goes Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. It's the fourth book of the Bible near the beginning. Numbers. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. Chapter 23, and we'll see what God's Word says here as we're reading God's Word, the Bible. And in verse 19, yep, 19, it says, God is not a man that he should lie. See, Steve James sometimes lies. You know what sometimes a man would do? I would say, to Greg or somebody, I'd say, Greg, I will meet you in such and such a time. And I will mean it when I say it. I will absolutely mean it. I'm not a, a deceitful person. But on the way there, uh, something happens. An emergency happens. Car accident, something. Train. Somebody was late. You know, a train. <laughs> you know, a train comes by and I have to wait. And I'm late. Well-meaning, just didn't make it. You know, that's not true with God. God's not a man. What does it say? God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? And the answer is, yeah, he will absolutely make it good. God is not a man that he should lie. All It says in the Bible that all men are liars. So... It never really shakes me up too much when I when I find that somebody's lied to me. I just go, well, you know, maybe he meant well, you know, whatever, you know. Or maybe he does it over and over again. I say, well, he's a man, <laughs> you know. Says He's just proven the word to me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we need to have confidence in and trust in God, in his word, and that's believing. And that's the greatest law, the law of believing. The how of receiving what God has declared and made available is by believing. Want to know how to get answers to prayer? Believe it. It's all by believing. Look at uh, Ephesians. We were Ephesians is after the Gospels, and it goes Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. And in verse 19 it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who do what? Believe. Believe. We do one thing. God is only required for us to do one thing. What? Believe. Believe. According to the working of his mighty power. We're asked to believe. Look at Ephesians 3.20. Chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we could ask or think, according to the power that works within us. If we believe, then we receive. Pretty neat. Through the power that works within us. Pretty neat. Um, let's go to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. 
in verse 12. We'll read this record here. And I'm going to, and with this record here, I'm going to show you the greatest law in the Bible, and that is the law of believing. They call something a law because it works each and every time it, you do it. It's like the law of gravity. You've probably heard of the law of gravity. The law of gravity is the earth has a pull and everything will fall to the earth. If you ever seen an apple fall from a tree, it always goes straight. No, it always goes down. <laughs> this pencil always will fall down. It works every time. That's how it is so reliable they call it a law. So this is the law of believing. It is so reliable that it happens every time. It's called a law. Mark chapter 11 in verse 12 is where I'd like to start reading. It says, And on the morrow, when he was come from Bethany, he was hungry. And this is talking about Jesus Christ. Him and his disciples were on a little journey on their way to Jerusalem. And seeing a fig tree afar off, having leaves, he came, if happy, he might find anything thereon. And he came to it, and he found nothing but leaves, for the time of figs was not yet which is kind of neat. See, in the lands and times of the Bible, the fig tree was known as the people's tree. If I had a fig tree out here in the lands and times of the Bible, you, anybody could walk over to that tree and, and get the fruit off of it. They just eat it, right? So Jesus was a little hungry, and he's seen the fig tree off there. This is the spring of the year. This is April. This is the week that he was arrested and crucified, earlier in the week, that week. And he sees a fig tree over there, and he goes over to it, and there's nothing but leaves. Huh. Verse 14. And he, and Jesus, answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. Now this is kind of unique, because if you, when you start talking to your trees, people might be going, hmm. <laughs> but Jesus was talking to the tree and he said to it no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever I want to give you some really good truth and insight here see the fig tree was the, it was the people's tree it was a tree that's significant to Israel and when he saw that tree and it had just leaves no little bitty buds that would become the big fruit See, he was hungry, but not starving. So he wanted to go to that tree and just pick those little buds and pop them in his mouth because they were very sweet. And later, in the, in the fall of the year, they'd be nice fig, figs. But right now, they were just little buds that were underneath the leaves. And as he went to the tree, there was no nothing but leaves. He knew that there was no fruit coming from that tree ever because without the buds no fruit and he also knew that that meant that Israel would reject him that Israel would not have the fruit that it should have it would have no fruit whatsoever and so he looked at that tree and he said no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever now let's go to Verse 20. And in the morning, as he passed by, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. Wow. The next morning, they went by that same tree. And as they went by that tree, you know what they saw? They saw that fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remember and said to them, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Peter was really shocked. He goes, you, you curse that tree and look, it's withered away. And look how it died from the roots. It dried from the roots up. Trees don't die that way. Trees died from the leaves to the roots. This tree died backwards. And this really shook Peter. And he goes, look at the tree. Look at it. Look at it. And verse 22, and Jesus answered and said, have faith in God. That word faith could be translated believing have believing in God believe God is a really good translation believe God for verily I say unto you 
that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when you pray, do one thing, what? Believe, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. This is the greatest law in the world, the law of believing. When it comes to the things of God and God's word, Jesus said, Have faith in God or believe God. For verily I say to you that whosoever, whosoever means what? Whosoever. You're right. Whosoever means, does it mean uh, people in this room? Yeah. Only? No. It means whosoever. Whosoever. You know what? I am a whosoever. A whosoever is me doesn't say sinner or saint. doesn't say person that belongs to this group or person that belongs to that group. It says what? Whosoever believes God. Right? Have faith in God. Verily say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, shall not, and shall not what? Doubt in the heart. You know, the word heart means the innermost part of your mind. Both doubt and believing are formed in the mind. They're formed in the mind. And what he's saying here is, don't doubt, believe. Believe the promises of God. Believe the promises of God. Believe that those things which, which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say to you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. Absolutely have them. That's the that's a law because it works every time. Once you have the promise of God, you can believe it. You can believe it. And if you believe it, it will absolutely come to pass. Absolutely. It's the greatest law in the Word. The greatest law that we can utilize the tap to live that more abundant life. It's by believing. And believing, simply said, is having confidence and trust in God that God will do what He says. So in the category of God's Word, believing is the greatest law there is. And we need to tap into that law. We need to believe God's Word to live that more than abundant life. To really have something. Whoever says it, whosoever believes it, will act and receive. Simple as that. It's the greatest law there is. Look at 1 Thessalonians. Now from here you go through the Gospels, through Acts, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians Okay, 2.13, it says, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that do one thing. What? Believe. believe. This word of God will work effectually with you as you believe it. You know something? We are even sometimes categorized by that word. I mean, they call us sometimes believers. We call each other believers, right? I say, well, look at all these believers. Why? Because we believe. Believers, I like that word. I like being categorized as a believer. Even if sometimes I need to grow in my belief, I still like being categorized as a believer. Let's go to the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 1. In verse 26 is where we're going to start. This is a, this is a wonderful record, and, the, and it also demonstrates believing in such a great way that I'd just like to read this whole record with you, starting in verse 26. And it says, And in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth. This angel Gabriel is, is one of uh, God's angels, so it's from the kingdom of God. It's on God's side. 
So the angel Gabriel was sent from God, see that, unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was what? Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art hardly favored, and the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And she saw him and was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God found favor or found grace with God. What's the first thing the angel says? Fear not. In verse 31, And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? Good question. Seeing I know not a man. I haven't been with a man. How can this be? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost, or the Holy Spirit is a better translation, and we know that's talking about God, shall come upon thee, and the shadow of the higher shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, hath, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, how many things are impossible? Nothing, Nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. What did Mary say? Okay. Be it, you know, she said, okay. We'd say, duh. But, okay, really, okay. So that's what's going to happen, okay. Be it unto me according to thy word. The word was spoken, okay. That's believing. Okay, I believe that. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste and to the city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Mary. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she spake out with a loud voice and said blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb and hence it is is this to me that the mother of my lord should come unto me and lo as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in my ears the babe leaped with joy and leap in my womb for joy and blessed is she that did what believe, believe. What was contributed to this happening was Mary believed what the angel <coughs> said. Now this was something that took some believing maybe, huh? I mean, no woman before has ever gotten pregnant without being with a man, right? right. And no woman ever since. So, but what did Mary say? Hey, you say so. That's believing. And Elizabeth says, Blessed is she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from who? The Lord. So Mary believed. Mary believed something pretty unique. And I'm glad she did because if she didn't believe it, then there wouldn't be no Lord and Savior Jesus Christ from her anyhow. It took a woman to believe this. Now, let's look at Matthew, the very first Gospel Matthew chapter 1 and we'll look at Joseph Matthew chapter 1 verse 18 now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise and that means this manner when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together that means they came before they came together in intercourse she was found with the child of the Holy Ghost then Joseph her husband being a just man and not willing to make a public example, 
was mindful to put her away privately. See, back in the lands and times of the Bible, if this happened, you could have you could have had your wife stoned. And he didn't really he he, he was a good says he was a just man, a good man. He says, I'll just let her go. Because he knew that he wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he knew that she's pregnant. It wasn't me. That's what's going through his mind. But he's still a just guy. He says, I'll just let her go privately. No big stone in downtown. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, hey, Joe, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall, shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from the sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and he took unto him his wife. See, Joseph got this vision in the dream while he was sleeping at night. And he got up that morning, and he said, I'm going to take her as my wife. The angel said I could. And he knew her not until she had, had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. And what we see here, Joseph also believed. Because if he didn't believe, he could have just got rid of his wife. Pretty neat. But that's what believing is. Believing is really so simple sometimes, but it's, it's hearing a promising God's word and going, okay, okay, I believe that. I'm going to do that. It's not hard. It's not, oh, okay. It's, okay, I can do it. In the next episode, we will look at believing and faith. I will share some of the differences between the two words and why I like to use the word believing. Why? Because it's more concrete, has more substance, and is more solid in understanding.